fall weather, the hoodie weather, the jeans weather, the sweatpants weather, just feels nice and cozy, blanket weather, hot chocolate weather. It just makes you feel all warm inside. Uh, but tonight, <clears throat> what you have in store for you is a, a talk about, a sermon about global conspiracy. And you'll be surprised how much the Bible gets right on what's happening in our world and what has happened. Um, and uh, you'll notice some, some, some similarities between what happened in the old days and the rains that happened in the old days and some of what's happening today. So you're in store for a real treat this afternoon, this evening, and uh, we can't wait to get started. Let's bow our heads and begin. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Lord, reveal to us your truth and open us up as we dive deeper. Lord, <clears throat> be with our speaker, Pastor Danny, as he presents your message, and give him a fire uh, this afternoon this, at this time as, as he brings your message and brings your truth. Lord, there are a lot of principalities and powers at hand that we have no control over, but Lord, we know that you are in control of all. And so be with us and give us peace as we hear a message of end time and past time trouble. In your name we pray, amen. I remember when I was, uh, I think in second grade or in first grade, and my teacher brought out a, a relief, a relief map of, 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 um, of the world or our, our continent. And she was showing me, like, these are mountains and plains and whatnot. And, and we're looking at that. And, and then my mind began to, like, process this relief map. And I said, hey, you know what? We live on mountains. And she's like, what are you talking about? This is El Monte. This is, not, this is a valley. This is not a mountain. And I said, well, 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 if you take away all the, all the water, you know, we're living on mountains. And she looked at me and she's like, Okay, Danny, be quiet. You know, you're messing up my presentation. Um, you know, ever since I was a kid, the world just never made sense to me. Just like there's things just a little off. Maybe I was the off one. I don't know. Just just never made sense to me, and that's why, in many cases, religion never made sense to me. It's like I saw a lot of stuff people were doing, but I never understood it. And not until I began to explore my own spiritual walk with God, I was like, oh, I get it. Now, this world still doesn't make sense to me. There are things happening in this world. I, I, I scratch my head, and I was like, what is this world doing? And why is it doing this? And so I guess in my mind, I was always... I, I'm a questioner. How's that? How's that? I've always had a lot of questions. And even to this moment now, I still have a lot of questions. Um, whenever I meet with my other pastor friends, I just ask questions because I just want to know. And sometimes questions get, to, get us in strange places, but I just have questions. And I can't wait to go to heaven because me and my angel will spend a lot of time just questions because that's how my mind works global conspiracy there seems to be in this world a different path a, a different path than what god ordained that's what i mean by conspiracy there seems to be something a different wave a different different program that i'm not comfortable with that doesn't speak true to me and i'm like what is that and i'm like how do you explain that and, and I ask these questions, and the questions start with this thing. I look at the back of the dollar bill, and I see this strange little imprint on the back of the dollar bill. I was like, why is that in the back of the dollar bill? You ever ask that question? Why well, I do. I, I do. And I just look at stuff, and I'm like, why is that? So I actually looked that up. What, is that, what does that mean? And the top part is called annuit coeptus. I think it's Latin. It means favored of God, okay? Uh, a, a blessing, mm, you're doing something that's blessed by God or a, that God approves. And then the bottom part is the real catchphrase these days, okay? The age or novus ordo seclorum, the age of the 
new, new age world or new world order. Okay, that's the, that's the big catchphrase. Okay, new world order. I was like, oh, this is fascinating. Okay, why does our dollar bill have this interesting um, little signage in the back of it? Because we, 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 I don't know if you've ever heard of it before. You ever heard of the new world order? Uh, it, it's a big phrase that people like, oh, dun, dun, dun. That there's something in the midst. And I'm like, is there any truth to this? Is there something about this? What is this new world order? That, what are people talking about? So, of course, me, this is what I do. I dig up stuff. I look into stuff. And I began to realize this new world order is not really a new world order after all. It's actually an old order. It's actually that something started 4,000 years ago, even older than that. It started actually in the Tower of Babel. You guys know what the Tower of Babel is? The story of the Tower of Babel? Noah had just... um, gotten off the ark because the world got so bad. I mean, it must have gotten really bad. The Bible tells us the world got so bad, people just did evil all the time. And, it just, and, and the, I think the saddest words in the Bible is, is that God actually regretted, you know? He actually regretted creating the world because it just got so bad. People were just doing such evil things. And then in God's mercy, he said, I need to reset. So God reset the world. And the way he did that was to get a boat. And you know Noah's Ark. But in God's mercy, you got to give God credit. He told Noah, tell the world it's going to rain. Tell the world it's going to end. You know what the sad part about the story is? He went around the world for 100 years. You know how many people went into the Ark? Eight. And to be honest with you, it wasn't even that great of a number because it was his sons and their wives. And that's the only people that went to the... (sighs) It's kind of disheartening, isn't it? If you think about it. Because no one knew, he knew it was going to rain. He knew the floods were coming. And he he wanted to tell the world. And and trust me, Noah was very respected back then. In the time of Noah, he was respected. People thought he was a little too godly, whatever, but he was respected. And, and I tell this one part of the story, it's, it's kind of sad, is that when they built the ark, it wasn't just them that built the ark. Does that make sense to you? A lot of people built the ark. A lot of people cut the wood and, you know, made the gopher. And, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people got involved in making this boat. And that to me makes me sad because there were actually people who helped Noah build the ark, but they didn't get in when it counted, when it mattered most. And I and I and I wonder for myself, as Christians, we build the Christian church, we do works of God, and are we making sure that we get in the boat? That when it's time to get in, that when the time calls, are we saying, Yes, God, I want to get in the ark or I want to get ready that I won't be left off the boat kind of a sad episode well the ark was finished noah's family got in and then noah's ark was flooded i'm oh, sorry the earth was flooded and then noah rested on the new earth it was totally different totally changed and noah decided to say hey maybe maybe earth maybe humans have a new chance at a new life well that didn't last very long um no whatever high hopes that Noah had for humanity, after a few generations, he knew it was going sideways. And the first great, they say the first great leader, or I would say first great king of that time, his name was Nimrod. Uh, Nimrod was a great warrior uh, at the early stages of the history of the world. And unfortunately, this is, there's a common disease when it comes to people with great power. Power gets to their heads. Yeah? And Nimrod got a big head. And he felt he could do whatever he wanted. And he had a dream. 
And this dream was to bring the whole world together, to all come together that they might worship him. Now, we know, we studied in the previous meetings that there is an angel, a deceiving angel behind it. Does that make sense to you? That there is something, somebody influencing the great men of our world. And the global conspiracy is really simple. It's about Satan putting his agenda on our earth. And it started right at the beginning. And we know in this story, Nimrod built this great tower that it might be a tower to bring all people to serve humanity. I don't know, for Nimrod, I don't know what he wanted to really create, but he wanted to reach the heavens. And God says, ah, he he stopped it. And we know the story that the Tower of Babel is called Babel because that's where God changed languages. And And by that, confusion, and then by that, people disseminated to the rest of the earth. Why do the nations rage? In a Christian perspective, we know that God's in charge. God's in charge. We know that God has a plan. But if you need, but you, I don't want you to think, I don't want you to think like a non-Christian, but if you want to think as a non-Christian, you must understand There are people who do not believe in God. They don't. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in anything else except who they are. They believe in their own glory. And and these people become rulers of nations and very scary ones at that. And we see all through history that men or women become gods if you if you look through history of all these leaderships and they're always worshiping gods and worshiping themselves caesar says i'm a god king xerxes i'm a god the babylonian kings i'm a, they all think they're it is interesting isn't it that once king gets power they're like they think they're gods and the scary thing about gods there is almost no morality they could do whatever they want you know what I'm saying? It's a scary thing. They could do whatever they want because they're God. Oof, a scary thing indeed. And we make gods. We make people into gods, marry into God, whatever. We just continue to make gods on earth. Let me tie that in now to this new world order. Humanity has not changed. It has maybe gotten a little more nuanced, has gotten a little more, uh, I guess, specialized or good looking or whatever. The world hasn't changed. It still thinks it's building its kingdom on earth. It's building something for them. And they always put it under a really pretty sign. And now it's a universal peace federation. They, they, They love these words. Peace, you know? Everyone follow me because I'll bring a universal peace. Uh, I've heard this before. I've heard this train of thought before. Um, The UN. I don't know what the UN stands for. It's it's an interesting group of people that come together uh, to bring peace on earth. But whenever I hear peace on earth, I always think, all right, what plan do you have for this world? And I'm thinking to myself, if it's of this world, it's not a godly plan. It's a human plan. And if it's a human plan, I know who's behind it. There is an enemy creating his kingdom here on earth. You see, these rulers and masters, they have no God except themselves. They might believe in some other force in the universe but they believe they control this domain and they run the show. But we Christians know who's really in charge, don't we? The world might rage. 
The world might plan. The world might think it knows what it's doing. But my friends, it is God that's in control. And we're going to look at tonight. In Thessalonians it says, while people were saying peace and safety, destruction will come upon them suddenly as a labor pairs on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. The new world order as, like I said, it's not a new world order to me. It's just the same world order from the beginning of time. It's just as a new fangled message in the internet with fancy colors, with Photoshop. Okay, but it's the same thing. And when this world is saying, we have finally come to a new history where we'll finally have peace, the Bible knows exactly what it's saying. When this world is saying peace, peace, and safety, you know we're in deep trouble. That's a warning for us as Christians. Do not buy into the lies of the world. Trust in the Bible that's in front of you. I feel... This is what Lucifer ultimately wants. This is what Satan wants. Satan wants to jail us or humanity under his prison. Satan wants worship, but he knows no one will openly worship Satan because he's a, I don't know, he's a narcissist beyond all compare. He is the devil. And he wants us as humans to serve him. But guess what? I don't want to serve him. Do you? I don't want to live under his jurisdiction. I don't want to live in his peace plan. I don't necessarily like him, and I don't want to be part of his message. I want something different. This world does not make sense. I want to go to what does make sense. In Matthew 24, 15, therefore, when you see the abomination and desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, Standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Jesus says, read Daniel. Okay? If you understand this, it will help you greatly. Jesus quoted Daniel above, um, no, he did. He quoted Daniel above any other book in the Old Testament. Because it was important. It's important to understand what the future held. And it's important for us as Christians living in this time, what does this mean for us? So we'll go to the book of Daniel, and we're going to go tonight to the book of Daniel chapter 7. We went to Daniel 2 last time in the beginning of this series. Today, we're going to look at Daniel 7. And Daniel had a dream. This time, not a king, but Daniel had the dream. And in this dream, I saw in my vision a night. Behold, four winds of heaven were stirring a great sea. And the four great beasts coming out of the sea, each different from each other. So he saw four beasts coming out of the waters. These are the four beasts that came out of the water, or at least a representation. The waters which you saw in Revelation 15. So whenever you look at Daniel, whenever you look at Revelation, you must understand it's, a lot of the words are symbolic. Does that make sense to you? It's symbolic. The Bible is for scholars. The Bible is for people, students who will study. And for all of us here, we need to study the Bible. You know, some people say, well, why couldn't the Bible just tell us what it meant? Well, if the Bible told you what it really meant, I don't think any Bible will exist. Because remember, we live in an evil world, remember? And if their names and their kingdoms are found in these Bibles, guess what? They're going to burn them all. Does that make sense? So God in his wisdom had to hide information, but his students, which are you guys, his students to unearth the truth. So when the Bible says the waters which you saw are what? People, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So whenever you look at Bible prophecy of Daniel and Revelation, and they talk about waters, it means what? People. Does that make sense? Those great beasts, which are four kings, which arise out of the earth. Whenever you see beasts in Revelation, Daniel, they mean what? Kings and kingdoms, okay? So if you see a beast in your mind, you're thinking, gotcha, those are kingdoms and kings. 
The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom on earth. So there's one, two, three, four. Just like we saw on the previous prophecy in Daniel 2, we're going to look at these, these uh, same symbolisms in Daniel 7. And the four Greeks four great beasts came out of the sea, each different from each other. The first was like a lion, and the head had eagle's wings. So the first beast is a lion, king of the jungle, as they say. I watched till its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man. And the man's heart was given to it first kingdom now another kingdom and suddenly another beast a second like a bear it was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth all this is highly symbolic and we'll get back to this and they said thus arise and devour much flesh and another beast and after this i looked and there was another like a leopard which had on his back four wings of a bird. And this beast also had four heads and dominion was given to it. Now, finally, after this, I saw in a night vision, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and extremely strong. And it had huge iron teeth. It was devouring and breaking pieces and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from the other beasts and before it, and it had ten horns. So four beasts, four representations of four kingdoms. Remember the statue that in Daniel chapter 2, if you were here? Remember the first head was what was made out of? The gold, the most precious metal, right? The most precious metal. And that represented who? Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon. Very good. We know that Babylon at this time was the first kingdom. This goes really fast. Conquered by who? The Persians. The silver. Then conquered by who? The Greeks, which was the bronze. The thighs of bronze. And then they were conquered by who? Rome. The legs of what what metal? Iron. But how does the story end? Remember Daniel chapter 2? What's the final kingdom? God's kingdom. So the, so the beauty of this message is this. Yes, the world has its plan, okay? The world is doing its thing. The world is machinating. It's, it's desiring. It's, it's trying to create the utopia of whatever it's trying to create. But God final kingdom is his kingdom this world will not succeed the four representations of babylon we have the lion with its wings from 605 to 539 bc we know medapesia came the bear it raised itself on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between the teeth of it They say that it was raised on one side because it was a dual kingdom. There were the Medes and there were the Persians. And believe it or not, the Medes were actually stronger at at, at first. But then the Persians became dominant. There are also the three ribs in its mouth. It represented the three territories that it conquered. So the Bible talks about an empire. And we know that this empire was destroyed ultimately by this empire, the fourth. Lo, like a leopard, which had upon it four wings, like a fowl. Some historians believe that the wings represent speed and quickness. We all know that Alexander the Great conquered the territory in a very quick fashion. Absolutely destroyed the Persians. His military genius it was just, it's just a wonder to behold. Interesting. Why the four heads? Historians? The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Because when Alexander the Great died, 
we know four generals took over. The four kingdoms shall stand up out of the one nation, and the four kingdoms that will emerge from this nation will not have the same power. We know that the four generals that came after Alexander the Great was never as strong as Alexander the Great. We know them to be Cassander. I always mess up this name. Lysicomus, is that right? Lysicomus, Ptolemy, and Seleucus. These are the four generals that came after Alexander the Great. Now, what is interesting is the fourth one. And this fourth beast is going to be important tonight, and then it's going to be important on Monday. Because we're going to talk about the Antichrist. What is the Antichrist? We know that Rome is the next kingdom that follows Greece. But after Rome, Daniel 7 introduces a new character, a new power, horns representing a power. And I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them a little horn. Okay, a little horn. And before whom there were three of the first horns plucked out by its roots. Ten horns out of the kingdoms are the ten kings that will rise. So the Bible tells us that there will be ten kings to come out of the Roman kingdom. But three will be removed to set up a little kingdom or a little power. Now, the Bible says it. We've got to look in history to see what this means. We know that we live in the time of the ten toes, don't we? We live in the time of the ten toes, as Daniel says. But the Bible talks about the ten kings that unfolds in 476 AD. What is this new little power, this little horn that will come about? We know that after Rome fell, it was broken up into ten kingdoms. And I'm not sure if you could read that up there. Maybe you can. But these are the ten kingdoms that arose after Rome fell. The Roman power became unfolding to a little horn power. And this little horn power is going to be a, an important power that we're going to look at. And we're going to spend the whole time on Monday to understand what this little horn power means. In this horn, there were eyes like a man, okay, and a mouth speaking great things. So this power could, has eyes speaking great things. And when Daniel saw this, and I was grieved in my spirit, and the vision of my head troubled me. Daniel said, this power is going to be absolutely destructive. The same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. So this same power is going to attack the saints. This same power is attacking God's people. Let me tell you something very important. The anti-power or the new world order that this world has created since the beginning of time, their main purpose really is to destroy God's people. In this world, there are two sets of people. There are people of the world and people of God. And the people of God are always targets for the world. This world does not accept God's people. This world does not want to help God's people. Actually, this world wants to hurt, control, kill God's people. And this power will attack God's people. We know by this little horn what's going to happen to God's people in the end of time. My friends, we are heading towards a very important time because God's people will stand up for truth and the world is not going to take it. He will speak great words against the Most High. This little power will speak against God. He shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change the times and the laws. And they shall be given unto his hand until a times, a times, and dividing a time. This is a, right here a time prophecy. And we will get more into this prophecy also in the next meeting. 
But whenever you see a time, that means one year. And a times means two years, which means 360 days. In Bible prophecy, days represents what? A year. So by this, a time, times, and dividing of times, three years and a half, we get to 1,260 year prophecy. How long the little horn will have power. This little horn represents a continuation of what began in the Tower of Babel. If you look at the foreign gods today, well, sorry, the foreign gods in the past, do you remember Zeus? You remember Jupiter? All those different pagan gods? Well, if you, if you look into those gods, it is, it is interesting how all those gods are very similar to the gods of old, the ancient gods, the gods of of Babylon, the gods of Assyria, the gods of Mesopotamia, and they have very similar traits. And it's, it's, it's interesting how that type of pagan worship continues, believe it or not, even till today. I was deeply troubled by my thoughts. Daniel saw this vision. And he, he began to get scared. He began to get nervous. Because he understood that this world had a plan. Let me say the good news. Satan has a plan. But how does that plan end? It ends in destruction of the world. Yes? We know that whatever humans try to plan, whatever new world order, and it's like I said, this is not a new world order. It's the same old tried method to control humanity. It doesn't work. It won't work. And right now, we are entering, to me, another attempt, another attempt of globalization, another attempt to bring the world together, another attempt to control the world, and it will fail again. But remember what I said? When they try to do this, it's always an attempt to destroy who? God's people. God's people are always a target of these events of this world. My friends, we've studied in Bible prophecy that there will be two groups in the world, yes? They'll be of the world and of God. When Jesus comes back, there will only be the wheat and the tares. That's it. And, and God knows this. And that's why God has given us Bible prophecy. Because he wants to tell us, make sure we are on the right side. The winning side. And my face turned pale and I kept the matter to myself. Daniel was highly disturbed by what he saw. I think all of us would be highly disturbed of what we saw. The little horn begins to attack God's people. We know the little horn power will end. And that's, to me, the most encouraging news I want to tell you. The power of Rome, the power of Babylon, the power of Greece, the power of Persia, the power of Nimrod, they all fail. The power of prophecy is this, that the world is going to end and God's rulership will last forever. In Daniel 7, 14, and that there was given to him, who? Who is the true dominion given to? To Jesus. True dominion belongs to Jesus. True dominion belongs to his followers. You are his followers. Yes? And the glory and the kingdom of all the people in his nations. And all languages serve who? Jesus Christ. My friends, his dominion is the everlasting dominion. The world is creating its own world. It's happening right now. Whatever you see on the news, whatever you, the gov, whenever they have these, well, right now, actually, I was reading the news. They're having the G20 summit right now. 
They're having the G20 summit actually in Rome right now. Okay? And if you know what the G20 summit is, basically the 20 quote unquote top countries of the world are coming together. And they have. They're right now. It's interesting. They're always in Rome and they're having a nice conversation and they're not singing kumbaya. Okay? Um, they have a plan. They have a plan to make sure this world is built for them. Well, guess what? We know better. That's weird, huh? We know better. They're thinking up plans, but we already know the plan. They're thinking of how to rule for the next thousand years. We already know it's not going to work. Because they're creating something, but we already know what will be created, and that's heaven. We don't have to fear the world. People are like fearing the Illuminati, and they fear the Bilderbergers, and they fear this, and they fear that. I mean, man, if you go to YouTube, I don't recommend it sometimes. It's just, it's just crazy in there. People are scared of everything. And people are like, oh, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. These people, these people, these people, and... I'm like, you know what? You don't have to be worried. Yeah, we have some crazy set of people doing crazy things. But we don't have to be worried. We know the future, don't we? Right? And we know who's going to win, right? And we know what's going to happen because God's the final dominion. We shall not pass away. This world will pass away. God's kingdom will never pass away, and his kingdom which shall not be destroyed. This is the beauty of the prophetic message, that everything in this world, beginning in the time of Babylon, beginning in the time even before the Nimrod, will all be destroyed. We know God's kingdom shall never be destroyed. The kingdom and dominion shall be what? Given to you, to the people of the saints of the most Hi. this is the kingdom that I want to be a part of. This is the kingdom that God wants you to be a part of. Let the world do its thing, okay? You can't stop them. They're doing their thing. They're having their G20 summits. They're having their meetings, and they're planning for the future and secret conspiracies and all this money, whatever. Let them do their thing. They're doing some funny things over there, okay? Let them do their thing. And I don't care what they're doing, to be honest with you. I'm not, I don't really care what the world is doing, but the world is doing their thing. I know God is doing his thing. And because God is doing his thing, I have no concerns about them. I know that God has a plan. God will take care of us. And we don't need to fear the world. Please, the world is not to be feared. To be honest with you, the world is to be pitied. The world is, is, is there's, there are people being taken advantage of. There are people who are let, being led astray. There are people that are being fear-mongered into doing things that they shouldn't be doing. The people who sit in front of their little tiny box or their computer internet and just confused. The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever and ever, Daniel 7. My friends, this prophecy is a prophecy of the end. And we're living in a time where we need to be truer and more firmer in our foundation of God. This is not a time to be wishy-washy. This is not a time to say, well, no, this is a time to say, this is what I believe in. And Daniel 2.35 became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, the new little horn, the new world order, whatever they call themselves to be, whatever the world thinks they are, my friends, God is in control. Is there a global conspiracy? Of course there is. It's called Lucifer. 
is called the devil. He's been conspiring since the beginning of time. And his one plan is this, is to destroy the people that God loves. You know? You know what the devil is like? He's like a bully who knows he can't attack the big guy. So you know what he does? He attacks the little guys, which might hurt the big guy. That's, that's what the devil is. He, he's playing a really silly game. And he's saying, if I can't go to heaven, I'm going to make sure I destroy as much as possible. He's a spiteful, foolish, he's, he's just the wrong person, a wrong angel. And my friends, tomorrow we begin another tract. Who is the Antichrist? I think you'll be surprised of who the Antichrist is. Because I am convinced it is not a singular person. There is a concept that there is some Antichrist who's going to bring some great... No, the Antichrist has been here long time ago. The anti-movement has been here for a long time doing their anti-Christ things. And they are doing their thing right now. But it's not a singular person, but it's a movement that's against Christ. Make sense? Anti-Christ. Well, am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. Guess what? Guess where we're going to look? We're going to look in the Bible. And we're going to look to see what Scripture has to say about the Antichrist and what the Antichrist is doing today. My friends, we live in a... We live in a wonderful and crazy and amazing time. Jesus is coming. And we know the closer we get to Jesus coming, the crazier this world is going to get. That is fact. It's going to get weird. If you don't think 2020 was weird, I don't know what to tell you. 2020 was, my brain went, what is this? Okay? Okay. And now we live in 2021. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know this. Jesus holds the future. And for those who are in Jesus, we're okay. Next week, we got some great messages and great presentations. Come back Monday. And we're going to talk about the Antichrist. What is it? What does it represent? How is it working in our day-to-day? On Tuesday, truth and consequences. There is truth. Can I say that? Truth is not relative. It's not my truth and your truth or whatever truth. I believe there is a singular truth. And you know who that singular truth is? Jesus. He says, I am the truth. Huh? That's what Jesus said. And then we're going to find out what truth means for us today. So we're going to look on Tuesday, truth and consequences. What happens when we break the truth? What happens when we go against God's truth? Well, there's repercussions. If you jump off a two-story building, you're going to break some things. All right, fine. Jump off a five-story building. Uh, No parachute for you. There's consequences of breaking the truth. And on Wednesday, we're going to talk about the most wonderful day that God has ever given to us, the Sabbath. I hope, I hope you come for Wednesday because it's, I don't know, today was Sabbath. I just don't know what to do without Sabbath. It's the greatest blessing. that God, Well, marriage is pretty nice. But Sabbath, two blessings from creation, marriage and Sabbath, both wonderful things that God gave to humanity. Thursday again is my my day off and your day off and friday wait what about sunday which is a valid question what does sunday mean well you're gonna find out and that's on friday well let us pray and we'll close up tonight's meeting heavenly father we want to thank you for allowing us to study bible prophecy that we looked at Daniel chapter 7 and we've seen, Lord, the, how the nations are raging. The nations are trying. The nations are building. But, Father, everything they build will turn to rust. Everything they build will turn to sand. will be blown away for the true kingdom that is about to come. God's kingdom that will last forever. Help us, Lord, to choose this day whom we will, who we will follow, whom we will believe, whom we will follow all the way to the end of time. 
And I pray Jesus might be our leader all the way home. We thank you for this group. We ask for your blessing. And we pray, Father, for your mercies and keep us safe. Until Monday, we meet again for another meeting. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Danny. So if you've been coming for 10 nights, we have a gift for you. Um, and the gift is going to be given out as you exit. Um, I was looking up the word conspiracy. And, um, you know, when we think of the global conspiracy, that word, that term conspiracy was created, I think, by the CIA. And it was uh, created to basically... Uh, label a group of people who are trying to discover truth. And, but this is the actual definition of the word conspiracy. A secret plan by a group to do something unlawful or harmful. And that's exactly what's happening. But lo and behold, this government and any government is not more important, more powerful, uh, wittier, more wisdom than the government of heaven. And that's the one we rely on. Tomorrow's our break. Enjoy your Sunday. And then we have Who is the Antichrist on Monday. I can't wait to see all of you. Again, if you've been here 10 nights, go get your gift that we have for you. You all, you all be blessed on this Sabbath afternoon or I guess this new week as it's begun. You guys be blessed. Have a good night. Thank you.